This is our system that attempts to solve the two-part problem of creating a tetrahedral mesh of balls and beams given points on the floor and on the ceiling, as well as creating a watertight approximation of the boundary of these components. So given the uh, balls on the floor and on the ceiling, we use Delaunay triangulation um, to essentially find all groups of four points whose circumsphere doesn't contain any of the any other points in the set. And these groups of four points correspond to the tetrahedra that will form our mesh. So you see here that we have one point on the floor and three on the ceiling. This is a one to three type of tetrahedron. We also have three to one. So we have many of those where three points on the floor and one point on the ceiling correspond to the tetrahedron, as well as two to two. So for example, two points on the ceiling and two points on the floor corresponding to this tetrahedron. And for the tetrahedron, we draw the beams themselves as well as the vertices as spheres. And uh, once we turn the beam size to match the sphere size, this is the mesh that we want to approximate, uh, whose boundary we want to reconstruct, whose surface we want to reconstruct. So we do this using the ball pivoting algorithm, which operates on point clouds. So the next step is to sample points along these different components along these cylinders and along these spheres, which we show here. Now, we're showing this as rendered triangles for the sake of performance, but the point cloud, you will you can think of it as just all of these vertices of these triangles that we're rendering. So when we sample the points on this cylinder, we will obtain points here, 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 corresponding to all of these vertices. And additionally, for the sphere, we will obtain points sampled at the vertices of all these triangles. When we run ball pivoting on these sampled points, we are running them on the points only, not on these triangles that we're rendering. There's no connectivity data. This is just for the uh, sake of rendering. So once we have the point cloud uh, generated from the, um, the beams and from the spheres that we want to approximate the boundary of, we can then move on to ball pivoting. So ball pivoting finds a uh, starting triangle and essentially tries to pivot over the different edges until it can find new points that correspond to new triangles which will add to the mesh and this method grows outward in order to approximate the entire surface of the mesh so here we found this c triangle zooming in we can see the edges are color coded so uh, green edges are those that are on the frontier they are edges that the ball, which we are visualizing as resting on the outside of this triangle here, will pivot over in some time in the future. The yellow edge is the edge that the, uh, the ball is currently uh, about to pivot over, and red edges are those that have already been pivoted over. So you can see here that the ball, which is resting on this triangle, will soon, right now, pivot over this yellow edge. We'll also show the neighboring point cloud and this allows us to see the sampled points uh, in the neighborhood of the ball so previously uh, we would look at we would have to consider every single point in the point cloud corresponding to all the beams and all the spheres which is really um, a major performance loss here we're uh, showing our voxel based approach so we only need to look at the neighborhood of the points that we are currently at because we are able to know which voxel this point is, what its neighboring voxels are, and what points are in those. So we'll step one at a time showing that the ball will pivot over this yellow edge, and it does. So it pivots over, finds this new vertex, so the ball is now resting on these three points. This triangle was never seen before, so it was created, and this edge was added to the frontier as well as this one. This is the new front so it pivots over that to find this triangle, and you'll see that the ball is pivoting as expected. Now we'll go ahead and turn off the point cloud and begin the animation of the pivoting, and you can see that it is actually finding the surface. It's finding new triangles um, on the surface of this beam, and you can see that when you let it animate, it actually corresponds to the metaphor of a ball rolling on the surface, so that actually holds up fairly well. Now. Because there are so many points, we'll just go ahead and skip right to computing the approximation for the entire mesh. And this is what we see. So here is the ball pivoting approximation given the ball size that we saw in the previous step. 
um, for the mesh that we had created using DLNA triangulation. Um, you can see how areas like here and like here are, are considered to be on the boundary because the ball, when pivoting around here, touched this uh, a vertex here and completed this shape. A smaller ball radius and more points sampled would create a much smoother approximation. We also implement smooth shading. So this system um, approximates the vertex normals of every vertex that we're drawing here. When we turn it off, we end up with a very faceted approach, a uh, very faceted look because the vertex normals are computed according to the triangles that they're on. So it's very clear that the triangles that approximate this mesh, um, they're very discernible. Turning on smooth shading allows a much, much nicer look. There are some incompletenesses in our mesh, primarily in the spheres that we are sampling and the uh, pivoting around these um, doesn't work all the time. This is an issue that we were unable to diagnose in time, but in general, um, the ball pivoting algorithm is able to reconstruct the surface of the mesh uh, really quite well. And that's all. Thank you for watching.